So the other day I was just modeling a mailbox as a practice and figured out it could use some mail letters instead of it. So when I was googling some reference images I came across a nice envelope icon which is probably designed as a vector in Adobe Illustrator and that means it looks 3D but it is 2D. So why not try getting that same effect the other way around in Cinema 4D? To make it a bit easier to get the proportions right we can set that original image as the background of our front view. I'll try remembering to add the link in the description. So in the front view press Shift and V and go to the back tab. In this field you can open the image and preferably increase the transparency. Let's get ourselves a cube to start with. To match this image it should be somewhere close to 480 wide and 310 high and maybe let's give it a thickness of 3 centimeters. Let's also go back to the viewport settings, pressing Shift and V, and adjust the position offset so it lines up with the cube. We are not moving the cube because that's perfectly centered in the scene, which will make the oncoming steps a bit easier for us. Cool, now we can get started with the real stuff. Make the cube editable by pressing C. Let's go in the edge mode, and then I'm going to pick the loop cut tool by pressing K and L on the keyboard, or finding it in the right click menu also works. I'm gonna place a first loop cut somewhere here, and let's use set value so we can have an equal distance from all sides because that gives perfect rounded corners when we put this in a subdivision surface later. So I'm going with 40 centimeters for this one. Let's do the same on all four sides. And you may notice the offset value is totally off if you pick the wrong side to make the cut. So just undo the cut and try from the opposite side. Okay, so if you have these four cuts all at 40 centimeters, we can continue with the next one which is exactly at the middle. You can line it up exactly by clicking this icon at the top here or setting the offset to 50%. Also create a second horizontal one at the top polygons. If you look closely, that will be the starting point of the triangular shape going down. Great, we can name this as our main piece. Let's duplicate it. We will make this our top piece. You can pick the knife tool now, pressing K on the keyboard twice or right clicking and let's make sure we have the visible only option turned off so we can cut all the way through. Now start at the corner point I just mentioned and bring it to that middle line at the height of our reference and then bring it back to the opposite corner. Then hit escape to stop the cut. Okay now we can go in the polygon mode and use the life selection tool with also the visible only option disabled so we can select all the polygons that are hidden. So we're going to select everything that's not the top triangle and you can delete these polygons now and make sure you didn't miss anything. That will do for now, so let's repeat the same steps at the bottom portion. So duplicate the main shape and use the knife tool to get the triangle cuts. Delete the other polygons and let's take a look in the 3D view now. So what you can see is the shape isn't closed anymore. We have gaps at the top. We can fix that in the edge mode and using the bridge tool by pressing B or right clicking again. And now you simply drag from one side to the other to fill the gap. So just repeat that on all gaps at the top of the shape. Of course we also have this problem at the top so let's do it there as well. Also make sure you don't forget this tiny one right here. Okay that should be fine now. Maybe now is a good time to check how this looks in the subdivision surface. So with an object selected, hold Alt while clicking the subdivision surface icon to make it the parent of that object. Do that for all three of them. And the first thing I'm going to do is making one more loop cut at the thin side of this shape, so right in the middle again. Also do that for the other two objects of course. And what this does is making sure the outer edges don't go paper thin. Right now the middle points of the top and bottom parts are way too rounded, so let's hide the main part for now and disable the subdivision surface. In the edge mode we can select the middle loop of edges by just double clicking it, then pick the bevel tool by pressing M and S or right clicking, and set the bevel mode to solid just to be sure. Then with an offset of let's say 20 centimeters, we get new cuts at both sides of the original line. Let's also do the same with the top part. Now at this moment the top and bottom parts totally intersect with the middle part, so we should rotate them a bit. 
but you can see the axes of these are centered to the envelope, which would make that rather difficult to rotate properly. So instead we are going to select this axis button at the sidebar, and in the newer versions of Cinema 4D you should be able to just click on an edge or point of the object to turn that to the axis point. And let's repeat that again at the bottom. Okay, also make sure you disable that button when you're done. And now it is probably best to move the parts out of their subdivision surfaces because the axis of those are still wrong, so it is easier to create new ones with the object selected and holding ALT again. That will make sure the axis is exactly the same. When that's done we can now easily rotate the parts correctly. Just don't overdo it, we only want them to not intersect. I'm going to get a quick render of what's going on so far and that's a good double check that things look right. Another quick adjustment we can make is selecting the two center polygons of the main piece, both at the front and back, and scale them out a bit on the Z axis. That makes it not so flat. You can also pick some of the other polygons and move those forward too, for a more gentle transition. At the smaller front pieces it is probably best to use the points instead of the long polygons, but I would keep these adjustments very small to avoid it getting all funky and stuff. Great, so you can see that makes the shape look a bit more natural. I'm going to create a null now and drag all the objects inside of it. Then we can select the main part and create an FFD deformer while holding shift so it becomes the child of it. That way it already has the correct dimensions, so that's a bit easier. But now we can move it out of there and put it under the null we just created so it affects all pieces in this group. Okay, just to be on the safe side we can increase the size of it a tiny bit and we're also adding a bunch of more grid points. For example, 6 in both directions and 3 on the sides. Then in the point mode we can use the life selection tool with only select visible turned on this time to select some points and make even more adjustments to the shape. For example, here at the back we can have it bulge even more and also at the front we can now easily move both parts together. So you can use this however you like, but the good part is the adjustments aren't logged in if you mess things up. So just disabling the deformer will get rid of these adjustments. Okay, so that wraps things up for the model itself. Let's move on to the set around it. I'm going to create the backdrop in the side view and use the pen tool to create a first point. Then hit escape straight after that to only keep that one point. That makes it easier to make a duplicate in a straight line holding control or command on Mac while dragging it to the other spot. You can put it back quite far and then make another duplicate of it above there. It should look roughly something like this compared to the envelope. Then select the center point, right click and pick chamfer. Click and drag on the screen to get a super large curve like this one. And you can also adjust it further at the side here. Okay, with that spline selected and while holding Alt again, create an extrude object, so that's the parent of the spline now. And depending on your version of Cinema 4D, this may look a bit different, but just give it a lot of extrusion in the sideway direction, and also center it a bit to the envelope so it is close to the middle. Now let's move on to the camera, so create one. At the bottom we can set the position and rotation back to zero. And then when you look through it, we can use this tiny zoom control at the top uh, to back out in a perfect line until the envelope is back in frame. Also make sure the background looks right in the camera view, so it totally covers the screen. Moving on to the basic materials, it's quite easy. Create a first one, and for the color we're just going to make it a bit brighter than the default white. Under the reflectance tab we can also increase the specular strength all the way to 100. This one will be for the paper parts. Let's duplicate this material, this one will be for the floor. And I'm just adding a tiny bit of grey and blue in there. Also under the reflectance tab we'll add a backman layer and set the opacity of it to 50% or something and at the bottom just open the layer Fresnel tab and set it to dielectric. This makes it look less like metal but just a bit more of a glossy surface. So if you drag the material on top of the floor you should see the envelope reflect under it. Now is a good time to add the lights but first make sure you also put the paper material on the envelope of course. To make this a bit easier, you can enable the interactive render region, which is the closest to a live render view. So the first light I'm going to add is an area light. 
Also rotate it so it points up or down instead of to the front. And I'll open the details tab of it so you can see how much I scale it up. The default is 200 centimeters, but I'm going all the way to over a thousand. Also raise it up above the scene, like something about 600 centimeters in height. And maybe you can also shift it a bit more to the front, so more of the light is hitting the front of the envelope. Okay, under the general tab of that light, you can enable an area shadow, which makes it a bit darker again. So let's add a second light and just put it right in between the camera and the envelope in terms of distance. But also a bit higher up to make the light look less flat and frontal. It shouldn't be that strong, so reduce it to 50%, let's say. I'm going to create another light and also naming the other ones so we know what is what. This newest one will be the ambient light. I'm adding a bit of blue in there. And then at the bottom here you can enable ambient illumination. That brightens up the whole scene. So maybe 60% is a better intensity than just all the way to 100. Okay, believe it or not, but we're adding even more lights. Just a default one again, but put it on the side this time. I'm sticking with exactly 400 centimeters, making it a bit blue again also. But we don't need more light for the brightness, we just need the reflections of this. So you can disable most of these check marks at the bottom here, but keep the specular one turned on. Let's also copy it to the other side, so that's why it was a good idea to use round numbers. So I used 400 centimeters. To get a bit more out of this, you can also increase the intensity above the 100% level. But then if you would render it, you can also see the huge reflections on the floor, which I don't like. What you can do is having both these lights selected and go into their project tab. Now drag in the floor object in that field, and that should exclude the reflections from the floor. My lights are a bit strong maybe, but that's easy to tweak. Okay, to finish the look, you can go to the render settings and add an ambient occlusion effect. Also, one last optional thing to get a stronger shadow at the bottom is hiding a thicker object like a cube behind the envelope. Because we are looking at it from the front, you can see it, but the shadow will be there. Now you probably want to take a look at the full result by rendering it real quick, because that interactive render region isn't that precise. I think it comes pretty close to that original icon we are using as a reference. Let's just quickly add that top notification icon to finish the project. For this, the front view is the easiest again. We can start with the white outer ring, increase the rotation segments of it to make it smoother by the way, and I'm just going to roughly size it, maybe a bit smaller than the original. Put it in front of the envelope and also add a fillet to the edges with plenty of segments for smoothness, but just use a tiny radius so it doesn't look like it's a donut. Okay, with the tube still selected, you can create a cylinder while holding Ctrl or Command on the Mac that will create the object at exactly that same location. Makes it easier for us to line it up. Again, get enough rotation segments for smoothness and then scale it so it is sitting right inside of that tube object. Then we can add a final piece, which is the text. You can do that using the Mode Text object. Depending on your Cinema 4D version, it may also be hidden under the MoGraph menu at the top. You can add any number you like as the text, and I'm also making it not as deep or thick. Also small enough, of course, and that's probably the easiest if you set it as a middle alignment. Okay, so try getting that in proportion. And then we can add two new materials on these. The white one can be pure white for the color, but also enable the luminous channel at about 70% to get rid of most shadows. So that's the number and the outer ring. Then for the center we can create a similar material, but red this time. Also red for the luminance and also 70% in strength again. Great, let's render and have a final look. And there you go. So this tutorial was quite specific again, but I hope this gives you some understanding of how you can use simple techniques to get a more stylized and clean look instead of just aiming for realism. Anyway, I hope you liked it and I will see you again in the next video.